Are you listening? Hello guys, welcome to the Mayhem Tigers um, instruction video on the new Inception Design M170R trigger. Uh, this is available on the website now, uh, so go to www.mayhemtigers.co.uk. Uh, the video is by myself, Alex M, and I will be talking you through the installation of the Inception Design trigger to an M170R. In your M170R case, you'll have the gun, you'll have some grease, and you'll have a set of Allen keys. So these are the things that we're gonna to need today just to fit this in and do a quick little um, overview maintenance on it. So the first things first, if you just grip the gun and hold on to the front grip uh, and pull it apart like so, um, I've made that look really easy, but uh, Bear with it, give it a good grip and it'll come off nicely. Just pop that to one side for the minute. And then what we want to do doing is going to the back of the gun here and you pull upwards the bulk assembly and pull it out like so. Very easy maintenance. Now what we're interested in is getting at the three screws. So we're going to need access to this trigger screw here. We're going to need to take out this back uh, body screw and then we're going to need to take out this body screw here To do that we're going to need two sizes there over there and um, to find those we just open up the uh, Kit of Allen keys and it's this small one there and It's this big one here So the bigger one uh, is for the body kit So it's the front body screw and the rear body screw when you're undoing these, always make sure that you put the Allen key right into that screw, uh, just to help um, with future maintenance, because if you don't put it in all the way, then it can shear the screw. So just wind that screw out nicely, and that'll come out, and we need to pop that to one side for the minute. So that's the rear screw, we should pop that over there. And then we want the front screw as well, we want to take that out. Uh, we just undo that nicely. Again, make sure you push the Allen key right into the bolt to make sure it comes out nicely. Then take the top of the body off at the bottom of the uh, grip frame. This particular one, M170R, has a hair valve. These are available in our shop also and can be bought as part of a combo deal. So taking off the grip frame, Again, insert the, the Allen key right into the screw and then take the screws out. Pop them to one side. Again, if you're doing this on field, it's always best to pop them back into your uh, case uh, so you don't lose them if you haven't got a tech mat or a nice flat surface like I have today. Let me just unscrew those four screws, so there's two on either side, nice and easy. Again, to loosen them off, make sure that iron key's put right into the screw head. If you don't put it right in, then uh, you do run the risk of uh, breaking the screw. Also, make sure when you are doing these back up that you don't over tighten them, as it's quite hard to get them out afterwards and also can result in the bolt shearing off and you losing the thread inside the gun. So once we've got that um, grip frame off, grip cover off, uh, we're interested in this screw here. So that is the trigger pin. Again, take your Allen key, it's the same one for the grip frame, and just wind that out. Nice and easy. Now you want to keep hold of the trigger at this time to stop it dropping out. But put that pin um, nice over the, there. Um, at this time, I normally take this uh, gasket off just so we can keep that safe. Because uh, if it does fall on the floor, then it's uh, quite hard to 
find it again. So if we take out, take out the, the trigger, watch out for that little trigger spring that's just popped out that you might have just seen. I uh, want to put that to one side as well. So now we've done the complete strip down that we need to. Uh, you'll see the safety mechanism here and then the hair valve at the back there and the uh, return spring. So with the M170R trigger, this bottom or number four screw can be changed to decrease the amount of post travel on the trigger. Uh, a personal preference for me is to actually remove the shortest screw and, ins and install the longer screw. That's giving you less uh, post travel. So that's the movement after the, the trigger has been activated. So I'm gonna put that uh, smaller screw to one side and we're gonna install the longer screw. Now to do this, you need to do you can you must screw from the back of the trigger uh, simply because the machining on the front is too smooth for it to come through. So you need to take the hex part of the screw, just get it started in the thread, and then using your Allen key, wind that right through to the front of the trigger. So now we've got a slightly longer um, post travel screw which reduces the amount of movement on the back of the trigger when it goes back in. So reassembly, uh, we've got a grip frame and we've got a three way valve. At this point we just need a little bit of grease so just put a tiny little bit on the three way gasket. Um, just like so, just so it's going to seal in there nicely when we put the body back on. So we've done that and we need to take the screw, the trigger and the spring and install the trigger into the grip frame. So taking the grip frame and what you want to be doing is aligning the trigger spring which has just popped out. I'm going to be aligning the trigger spring into the black part of the return, tring, return trigger spring assembly. Taking the trigger pin, just pop that into the um, grip frame through the ball bearing um, part of the trigger and then with your small allen key, just do that up nicely. Again, don't do these up too tight. Uh, Want to make sure that we can undo them again and we don't thread, uh, cross thread or strip the threads on these. So make sure we've got the gasket uh, in, we've got a trigger in, a spring sitting in there nicely. Want to take the body section and we hook it on the front of the body and then just bring it together at the back. If you pull the trigger while you're doing this, it just gets it out of the way and just lets you uh, seat the back of the um, body back onto the trigger frame. So take the rear screw, do that up nice and tightly. And then we'll use the finger method just to make sure it's tight in there. Just testing the trigger just to make sure it's all working correctly. We'll just keep an eye on that spring, just make sure that's seated correctly. And then take the front grip frame screw and do that up as well. Once you've done that up, just uh, double check the tightness. And then we can now put the front grip back onto the gun and 
get that nice and seated. At this point, just want to check that the safety catch is working as well. And then we'll go from there. So we'll put the uh, grip cover on. There's four screws to either side that we just need to do up. That's the gun back together. What we're going to do is just keep that uh, small screw nice and safe in the little snappy bag that uh, Inception provide and keep that to one side. Back into the gun. Just push that all the way home, give it a little wiggle at the back just to get the seating right and then push down until you hear it click. That's the gun back together. As you can see, uh, the black matches quite nicely with the uh, grip frame and the other parts of the gun. Now this next part, what we um, have produced is a little uh, run through of the trigger adjustments, what the four screws actually do. But this is all um, down to personal choice. So the first screw that we want to be adjusting is the top screw and then you want to work down in order one two three four so with the safety catch on we can feel that there's some play in the trigger the stock trigger doesn't have this screw um, so it's an additional screw that the fang trigger has so to to adjust this we want to wind this anti-clockwise to wind it in. So this will reduce the amount of play that the pre-travel has um, on the trigger. So what we want to do is make sure that the safety still works. So for this particular part, I've actually done that up a bit too tight. So I want to back that off a little bit just make sure that the safety still clicks over. So again, we can just adjust that down to the correct setting. So again, now we've got no travel in that whatsoever, but the safety is still working perfectly. The next screw is the um, trigger spring screw, which is this second screw here. What we wanna be doing is um, adjusting this in for a harder feel to the trigger or adjusting it out clockwise for a harder feel or anti-clockwise for a softer feel. Once we've done that, um, we'll make sure that we're happy with that adjustment. This is when we need smear. Okay guys, so once you've got your trigger in, we've adjusted the first two um, screws. What we want to do now is air up the marker. So I've just got a quick uh, connect line onto the marker. Um, if you gas it up, and the trigger doesn't actually work, what we want to do first off is adjust the third screw. So it's not the top one, that's not the trigger return, that's the actual one that makes the thing go bang. So to do that, we'll turn that outwards, which is, as you're looking at it, anti-clockwise, and the marker 
should pop like that. Now what that means is the three-way valve has actually worked now and now we can look at tuning the marker in. We do want to leave a little tiny bit of play on that just to make sure that uh, it doesn't go off accidentally or um, it's not too sensitive. So once we're happy with that engagement of the uh, trigger activation, we want to look at the last um, screw, which is this larger one that we changed earlier. So that is basically the back pull of the trigger. So that is where the trigger stops. So we can make this as short or as long as we want to, um, just by simply adjusting this small screw at the bottom. So for this particular customer, they want a short stroke um, trigger. So what I'm gonna do is just wind this in slightly. So if you have the marker this way up and insert the into the screw, you wanna be screwing it down to make it go in. Screwing down and screwing down again. So once we've done that a couple of times, we wanna test it again. Just make sure that the marker fires and recharges and fires and recharges. You actually hear the mechanism working at this stage. You can actually buy from our shop a stellar barrel kit with a muffler on the end of it, which is great for servicing uh, markers inside. So again, what we'll do is we'll just tune that slightly more. So again, downwards motion makes the screw go that way. Upwards motion makes the screw come this way. So we want to just check that the marker fires and recharges. We'll be able to hear that firing and recharging. So we'll just do a little test. So again, once we've got some paint through that, we'll check the marker and just make sure we're happy with the setup. If you feel that the trigger needs to be adjusted slightly, then obviously refer back to our uh, little crib sheet, which will give you some helpful tips on how to um, adjust the trigger. What we want to make making sure is once we've finished uh, all the adjustments that the safety still works and the gun can't be fired still. Thanks for watching this Mayhem Tigers Inception Design M170R Fang Trigger installation video. The Fang Trigger is now available on the website in either black or red. The Fang Trigger is also available for the EMEC in either black or red. There's a variety of body kits available from Inception on the website also for the standard version of the EMEC and also the MagFed version of the EMEC. On the website also is a variety of barrels and barrel kits. And there's also team merchandise available. The Mayhem Tigers are sponsored by Planet Clips and the M170R, also the EMEC. We wear Anthrax clothing, we train at Mayhem Paintball in Essex, and we shoot GI paint. On the website, we have a variety of Inception Design products. You can find us at Facebook and Instagram at Mayhem Tigers or on our website mayhemtigers.co.uk. Like and subscribe on the YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks very much and we'll see you soon on the field.